The answer is no. So we're going to be starting off in losers round one with Haven and Yay. Nard. Oh, man. Losers seventh. Kicking off. Uh, so Haven has been playing the uh, entire bracket using Maple. Uh, Nard has been on the Forsburn from what I've seen of him play. And this matchup is so awkward to play into. Yeah, and also certain things carried over. The floors were in propaganda. It's literally just coming over from Rebels 1 to 2. Everyone's like, this character can't kill. The back here is all, all the characters got. And I'm literally sitting there like, don't let them trick you for in another game. Like, <laughs> you, you've had how many years to think about it, and you let them just get away with it scot-free with no consequences, but there'll be a switch up on the characters. We're actually seeing a Claren instead. Yeah, and I don't, I don't dislike this, right? Like, one of the biggest things, because you're right, like, there has definitely been some Forsburn downplay happening. Uh, the character is still extremely good, as very, very capable, uh, as are the entire cast of Rivals of Ether 2. Uh, but Clarin does a lot better at poking at exactly Maple, because the things that you want to beat Maple with are juggling. You want to make sure that she feels bad about having really poor air acceleration and is forced to commit to those uh, side special dashes more frequently, as well as more reliable ways to hit grounded opponents, since Maple naturally sits really low to the ground. And Claren checks both of those boxes easily and seamlessly with her normal gameplay, which is going to make her a lot more effective into this matchup in particular, as we see instantly run up down tilt jab, getting all of that normal type of uh, set up zoning and set up spacing right off of the bat. Missing the parry on the Lily earlier is going to create for a rather even sort of initial situation, but Ooh. man, Clarin just plays so well into scrambles. Yeah, but the percentages, even though quite quickly in a dash attack to kind of follow it up, but all of a sudden the pressure kind of turned on its head, and I can kind of see what you're talking about. Like the ability for both of them to kind of box them as well as Claren's like base game plan coming into play. But I'm really interested to see, because I've seen so many times of just Maple absolutely just being able to just storm through like how many of their opponents from the momentum they can just gather up their kill power. I've seen it so many times, but at the same time, like you said earlier, Claren kind of the one who can, you know, have the base game plan. I think it's the most important thing, the adjustments of it. Nothing more to change, but ooh, a little bit of a scramble situation. And all of a sudden, I keep talking about that one, but people almost losing the stock just like that. Haven tried for a really cheeky up air reversal, and if it landed, you could get like up air into a tether follow up. Oh, guess it's wrong on the forward throw. Finding that grab and Clarence's grab game in general is so dangerous. Not only do you have to worry about the special pummel or normal pummel, you have to worry about the forward and back throw 50 50 into a very powerful forward strong. In that case, it was back throw into down throw trying to set up more. 36% and climbing the no fun zone active once again. No fun zone, can't throw anything around there, and you know, Maple would love to be able to throw the seeds on, but great follow up in the follow through. Can you make it back? Great. Used to just make sure it's like the insurance policy with the Ledgehog, and all of a sudden, 53%, not too bad. And like you said earlier, already trying to go for that grab from how deadly Claren is when she's able to get it. Yo, shout out to that hard SDI down on the side of guard, right? Like, able to get out of Maple's. Uh, Typical up air juggles really early and convert it into so much damage afterward. The downer is going to intercept finally Haven with a chance. One up air. You're not SDIing out of these. Goes for the reset, but is not able to find the pickup on the top platform. Nard gets a chance to pop off, but no stock taken. Yeah, it felt like two different opportunities. Both those players kind of missing it. The reset attempt and then almost getting the reactions with the up strong. Drilled that one into my head. Not going to let up smash slip through my lips. I've seen how many times. People have been talking about that one, but speaking of slip, great usage of the temper with the jab, just kind of making sure to maintain that position and instantly follows through. And a nice attack is going. Oh, special pummel. Gets a chance to just find one down there. Nothing too crazy. No tippers following up. And now we're at these. Wow, what a call out. I was going to say that Haven has uh, reached the percent where up throw doesn't have any true combos anymore, but uh, you know, Ooh. sometimes you can just make things up. Yeah, I almost got the spike with it. Great direction on air dodge, and as well, being able to kind of survive, utilizing the plants in order to get away, not gonna act with the no fun zone afterwards. So instead, 147 trying to get it, but all of a sudden, 
deployed once again. It's just like the plant that Maple wants to utilize is just kind of being used again. Being able to kind of just get a guaranteed afterwards, but cleans up the stock after. Let's see what can be done. Maple, one of those characters, can definitely turn it around on a dive of Claret already with a strong attack. Trying to finish it up on there, and it's going to be it. Woo! Needed the wall jump before going for the uppercut. Uh, but I 100% agree with Wolf. Like, Maple is absolutely a character that can swing quite wildly as long as you're right once or twice. Once to get the opening and once to potentially like read an air dodge or something similar. Um, the existence of a dash attack forward air or dash attack up air uh, reset combo on a stage like a Ho Dojo is truly, truly threatening. I wouldn't even be surprised if we go back to that stage, but mm. Haven choosing for a stage with a little bit more width while still having those top platform uh, threats on Motrin port here for game number two. What I will praise the Rivals dev is besides almost everything, is I love the stage designs. I feel like that they're super unique in a way that's not super intrusive to like the, the game. Like you've seen so many like uh, other platform fighters kind of have these different stages and everyone's just like, uh, we can't really play on that one because of like this gimmick of like where the floor opens up and you press a certain button of some sorts. But at the same time, Merchant's Fort, utilizing that kind of the big surface and as well as the good little platforms. I've seen so many like characters and players utilizing them to extend out things. But look at this pressure. Kind of continuing on and stuck on the side of the stage and instantly gets punished for that one. Yeah, Haven kind of way over complicating the recovery route, trying to really find the, the gap between uh, 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 Nard going for a down tilt to intercept. Ends up leaving himself way open for a big forward strong to take an early lead. But Maple can fight things back, able to end a combo early, Ooh. just misspaces the down tilt and gets grabbed for it. Not too much damage, but 30% is a really rough start against Claren because she plays around uh, Crouch Cancel so unbelievably well. Mm. Crouch Canceling, one of the biggest, like, my hottest debates of talking about any game, but excellent to read on that one. Flashes with, I think, the getup attack? Yeah, that Afterwards. was that was Claren's special getup, which is a uh, it is vulnerable before the hitbox comes out, so you can react with something like a down strong once you hear her start laughing. Mm. Oh damn! And avoids out the avoids out the attack, but got stuck in another one. A little bit. Of a, I wouldn't say necessarily a frame trap, just kind of being able to fall through. And as well as utilizing the platform, great combo there, but was that SDI to get out of that one? Looks like it. Some, some single strike DI. Single shift DI, excuse me. Oh, Man, I almost heard that one because I was like, is, is it really called that? Nah, single <laughs> shift, I was like, yeah. that's kind of a vulgar word to describe <laughs> attack, but I've definitely heard worse. And try to follow through afterwards, but gets away just in time, lands and down tilt. Can't connect with the down strong afterwards. Such a great tech chasing tool. But all of a sudden, Maple, we kind of like discussed it earlier, kind of turning around, but that plant has just been providing nothing good for Maple, unfortunately, and that's going to be the one too. Yeah, sour down air pop ups into that perfect tipper back air. Now we just get to see where Haven has been struggling. Honestly, all, uh, all of this set, uh, Wolf, where it'll be damage, it'll be the, the, the swarming nature, and then it'll come down to being right on a tech chase to take the stock, and Haven will just be wrong or miss ever so slightly. Nard playing really good in the clutch moments of defense, like being able to get out of very dangerous situations and turn it into Ooh. power. Oh my god, if that tipper down air hit, it could have been curtains. Yeah. And it's also, it's demoralizing too, just being just off and being, watching your opponent just go up to like 140 consistently, by the way. Right. Like this has been a consistent factor and Maple has been having a hard time sweeping up the stocks and all of a sudden you're at 93%. You could potentially just get put into a Texas situation or confirm fishing for the jab as well, but a whip punish afterwards gets the whip into finally cleaning it up. But we've seen this happen last time. I really don't want to repeat of game number one where it was just finally able to get it back up and see what Maple can do. But once again, following through trapped on the right side of the stage, finally is able to get away and we'll have to see what this can do because we can see what Maple can do. Quick 29%, nothing too crazy, but the jab into Forward Strong is going to seal oh. the deal for game number two. We are in top eight, so it is best of five territory, oh, but you got to think like Haven had now has had two games progress in generally the same fashion. It's a low percent one stock on both sides. 
got to reconsider some of your combo routes, some of your decision making to see what has Nard, where has Nard been leaving himself so open, so consistently in order to turn things around. I like going back to a stage like Hodojo. Oh, okay. A pro tether. Cool. <laughs> tether cancel action, but unfortunately led to only five and great little move on there. That's to me, that's kind of the sign of like someone really like pushing the momentum is like when they're able to kind of like dash back left and right dash dance and then seeing their phone just stuck in shield oh, like it's just a huge like moment of pressure where you're kind of giving up saying like i'm really scared of what potentially can be done you can't do that against claren like you have to respect the range but at the same time it's like that fine line of being able to just kind of push forward because if you're just playing too scared then claren's just gonna have a heyday being able to maintain that aggression as well as the zoning power with this one, but the grab into the strong. Thankfully, not the tipper, but all of a sudden, you're threading with that one, but excellent reversal to get out. Man, that's so rough. Like, and it's that, it, it's the same theory of what you were talking about earlier, Wolf. Like, just Haven having those little bits of hesitation to where a platform tech chase that should have been something like an up air or an air or some sort of follow up ends up just being nothing overcomplicated and not able to escape with a, uh, a plat drop into back air. Leaving him open for the lead and that lead is only gonna keep extending oh, no. with the neutral special and still following up off of the dash, yet nothing. Yeah. Nothing off of that. Instead, Haven gets a chance to play into the upper There we go. And that is where Ho Dojo is going to make its money for Maple, able to reset on the top platform and have access to the 50 50 that is like chasing down with a high rising up air or uh, calling you out with an uppercut to close out stocks even earlier. It was such a good stock, but the problem is, is making sure you maintain on the second because you're still behind. Excellent follow through as well, making sure that Haven can't breathe at all. 126. In a blink of an eye, even getting the throw afterwards. Nice little wave dash to kind of follow up. Finally escapes. But that's the problem. That plant, man. It's supposed to be Maple's, but I think it's Claren's like secret double Asian at this point. Yeah, Lily really is just not been a factor whatsoever on the side of Haven. Like no traps, no wraps, no nothing. Just a free uh, plasma field for Nard uh -oh. every single time. Looking for the side. Uh -oh. th okay. <laughs> Hold. <laughs> a little bit too lost. Tried to get the plasma echo going, but alas, no dice here. And Haven gets a chance to reestablish some momentum with some of Maple's insanely fast frame data, but Nard right back to oh it. Oh my god. That's what we were looking for the first oh time, my. and there's the finish. What a statement. I think. Like, I've been just kind of watching Nard just consistently get those, like, excellent, you know, guesses on the tech chases. And just, that one was just an evisceration. Like, a perfect setup and a perfect follow-through. Oh, my goodness. That, that never gets old. Claren, you know, one of those characters I love casting about playing against. Maybe not too much, <laughs> but holy, you'll never catch me sleeping on. It's like, so... Geez. Her combo game is just so visually stimulating. Like the sound design, the hit effect, it's like, it all comes together to create such a really powerful type of, uh, type of impact for every single hit. Uh, but then you play against it and it's like, wow, I'm in hit stun for years. Holy yeah. moly, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> my favorite bit was the, uh, it was like the Smash one where it's like, oh my God, I love playing Claire. And it was just the, it was the using the timer thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of doing the same combos. I kind of laugh about that one. But damn, I just think like one of the biggest defining factors, and I think you'll agree on you, is that Nard was just able to catch like Haven's like burst defensive options, like a, like a, like a parry just feeling pressured. Or and if Nard uh, and if Nard would just catch on to when Haven was like respecting it a little too much out of fear, which I understand by the way, that was like some scary Claren action that I was seeing but just kind of like too invested into it, being stuck in shield, being forced to just kind of go for these wild defensive options that, you know, leave you way too open. And also that plant, man, that's oh, got to yeah. sting. Like, it's like your buddy. It's like one of the tools you want to use. And it's just Clarence World. Yeah, it was going back to what both of us were talking about at the start of the set, right? You pivot over to Clarence because what Claren is so effective at doing for almost the entire cast, like she has a very, very good matchup spread in my opinion, 
is she's just so good at shutting down all of those like secondary mechanics or those extra uh, tricks and traps and utilities that all of the cast like tried to flex out. And while Maple, you're not shutting her down completely, you are shutting down Lily. You're shutting down being able to toss Mark and you're stopping Maple from reliably just oh. dash dancing around you. Meanwhile, you are constantly putting out the threat of the no fun zone and all of your massive disjoints to say, hey, try dashing around this or try jumping around this as I do wave dash forward, down tilt and jab and really, really shut down the amount of movement that Maple has to, at her disposal, which is half the character. 